This month on Mustang Magazine, we showcase our freshman stories, which include catching up with the new assistant principal, seeing Chris Gilman's flipping passion, and getting to meet the snake boy. All this and much more on this freshman edition of Mustang Magazine. Hello, and welcome to Mustang Magazine. I'm Ron Marshallsey. And I'm Juliana Shalmo. Mustang Magazine is a show produced by broadcast journalism students from the advanced television production classes. But on today's episode, we see stories made entirely by our entry-level classes. To start off the show, reporters Jordan Dranken and Jake Smelter bring us to no the Norfolk Aggie High School to reveal who's best in show. Kaylee Brown and her partner are training for their next big show. His name is Teddy. He's three. And he's a Bernie Snowden dog. Okay. Kaylee is a dog handler. And with the help of Teddy, she's been a dominant on the 4-H circuit. I got interested in 4-H because one of my neighbors told me about it. And so I decided I'd try it because I wanted, was interested in doing junior showmanship in AKC. So I thought it would be a good start to start training him before I did AKC. So I, and then I really liked it. And they don't train alone, working with the same coach for the past two years. Kathy Quinn remembers when Kaylee first started out and how challenging Teddy was to handle. <laughs> I love Kaylee and Teddy. Um, Teddy started with us when he was a puppy and he was really obnoxious and rambunctious and very full of energy. and. Difficult for Kaylee, who was very young at the time. Kaylee was only eight. Uh, difficult for Kaylee to manage on her own, but she's put a lot of hard work into it. She really works with him outside of the club as well as in the club, and uh, was determined that she was going to be able to handle him, and she shows a lot. Some challenges when I started was that he liked to pull out of the ring to get to my parents and didn't want to stay in the ring and sat on the judge's feet and just wanted attention from everyone and wanted to steal people's treats. But these days, she and Teddy are a bit more refined. Um, he doesn't run out of the ring really anymore and he listens to me better. And some of their fellow competitors have noticed their progress and understand the challenges of handling a large dog like Teddy. He's very talented for a big dog. Sabby's like a small dog so he can't do as much. Competitive dog handlers like other athletes will usually develop a game day routine. When I get ready for shows I usually will walk him first and try to like calm him down. And with all the right preparation Kaylee and Teddy expect to perform well. For showmanship I get usually first place and like reserve champion or champion in showmanship. Obedience, he is not obedient and I usually do not do well. And now that it's spring, the competition season has their schedule booked. At last year I went to like 10 dog shows, which was all of the ones that I could go to. The more you exhibit, the better at an exhibition you get, like anything. The more you practice in lacrosse, the better you get. Um, so they've been doing wonderfully. Kaylee and Teddy are continuing their great run in showmanship this season and are hoping to improve in obedience, or maybe not. I'm Jordan Drancon reporting from Mustang Magazine. Ten Good Thanks guys. Now let's head over to Colosimo's kitchen to see what's cooking. Jenny King and Ali Kelleher report. Three, two, one. Something's cooking in the Colosimo kitchen and freshman Luca Colosimo is trying to capture it on video. My role or part that I play in my mom's YouTube channel is that, I, is that I'm kind of the cameraman. I'm the one who's kind of like behind the scenes. 
The Colosimo Kitchen has been posting their tasty creations since 2014 and it has a respectable following. Head chef and head mom, Lisa Colosimo, decided to create the channel after a suggestion from her son. It was actually thanks to my son who loved my cooking and said, Ma, you should, you know, put that out there so everyone can learn how to make all the good stuff that you make. Despite the fact that they both have busy schedules, the Colosimos begin cooking and posting. The hardest part is, is probably just, you know, having the time to do it. Um, because I'm busy working full time, it's, you know, it's tough. I've chosen to grill it, but you can also toast it in the oven. There are a variety of meals to choose from on the Colosimo Kitchen channel. I loved watching my mother cook and grandma and have taken on all their Italian traditional recipes. My favorite meal that my mom has made on her channel would definitely be her bruschetta, which is basically just an Italian appetizer with tomato and basil. And I really think that her bruschetta tastes amazing out of this world. And, and it's on French baguette bread and it is so tasty and scrumptious. I'm really trying to get healthy recipes out there because it's, you know, we're all about getting healthy these days. But all recipes aside, the Colosimos admit they've gotten more out of the channel than just sharing meals. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy working with him. We, we get to spend time together doing it, and he's taught me how to um, get involved in the latest technology and getting the word out there. I really like to help her get recognition. I like to help her get noticed. And I just want people to see, like other people, to see like how hard she works in the kitchen for me every time she cooks recipes. I would also love people to get inspired by her recipes so that they can do that for themselves at home. So next time you're feeling that ache in your belly, check out Colossio's Kitchen for a cure for your hunger and a brand new recipe. Reporting for Mustang Magazine, I'm Jenny King. And thanks again, everyone, for watching. To all my friends near and far, until next time, salute a tutti e ciao. Great story. Hope to see more of Mrs. Colosimo's cooking. This year, Norwood High School brought some new administration to the scene. Reporters Maggie Kelly and Jada Vincent bring us the inside scoop. New assistant principal, per name of Adara, says she's enjoying her new position at Norwood High School. And I love to see um, students from all different walks of life, um, socioeconomic backgrounds, so it's, it's just very nice to work with diverse populations. I feel like, um, you know, the passion and energy here, that's the, the, the greatest part. I see it in athletics, I see it in the music, um, so I want to be part of that passion. Adjusting to life at a new job can be challenging, especially when the staff is as big as NHS. Getting used to, you know, a lot of teacher names, student names, and um, staff member names. So those are, those are coming along and sort of just to get to know the community a little bit and getting to know folks and also jumping in on a job. So those two things have been probably a little bit of a challenge. Radera comes to NHS from many schools such as Newton South and Maynard High School as an assistant principal for both. So she brings experience to her new roles and responsibilities. I think I do a little bit of everything. I evaluate teachers, so I'm in the classroom and take care of that. I talk about budget with the principal. And she's eager to bring some of her own ideas to the NHS student body. So I, I would love to bring in um, additional international programs. I think it's a really good connection for kids. I do see some students like from Spain coming here, Brazil coming here, but I don't see a lot of our kids going elsewhere, so I think that would be a really unique opportunity that I'd love for you guys to be engaged in. Videra understands how traveling can shape a person's view of the world. She's personally spent a great deal of time globetrotting in her off time. You know, the people, the culture, the food, the language, everything really came to life and I can empathize a lot better, I can relate a lot better. So I definitely think all of you should travel at least once, if you can, before you graduate. And Videra hopes to share more ideas as time moves on, saying she's thankful for the support during her first year. Everybody's so wonderful here to work with. They're very personable, they care about, and the teachers really care about you guys, um, and that's very nice to see. I can see their passion in that. It's really nice, all the positive energy in the building. Reporting from Mustang Magazine, I'm Maggie Kelly. Thanks, ladies. Oh, no. I cracked my phone. Do you?
know anyone in Norwood that can fix phones? As a matter of fact, Finn Kelly and Nick Parkinson discovered a phone fixer in Norwood. When your iPhone is broken, you could take it to Apple for an expensive repair, or you could take it to Rob. I do computer repair and I help my parents with the store. 27-year-old Rob Verma works at the counter at AJ's of Norwood, but on the side, he runs a successful technology repair business. Most common, common are phones, um, and iPhones specifically. Mostly screen damage. A lot of water damage too, but mostly screen. And bringing your devices to Rob can also help you save some money. I keep my costs pretty low, um, so I am a little bit cheaper than most people, and then the other thing is I'm more relatable. I'm right here. So, you know, would you go, rather go to somewhere where you don't really know the person or a person you actually know? So. But phones aren't the only thing Rav has fixed. I had someone bring in a radio from, it was like a police scanner radio. I don't even know, it was like 20, 30 years old. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a weird fix because I couldn't, you can't get some of the parts anymore. So I had to modify it. According to Rav, getting parts for various devices can be a challenge. Um, I have to order a lot of them from overseas and it's a, uh, sometimes a problem because you just can't get any. Um, screens, for example, you just can't get any. With so much diversity in devices today, it can take some time for repairs. So the fastest I've done an iPhone is probably 10 minutes or 11 minutes maybe. Yeah. I don't try to do that, but <laughs> I have done it in 11 minutes. Even with no advertising, Rob is never short on business. But he says some times of the year are busier than others. It goes seasonally, usually around Christmas time actually a lot. Whenever people come home, like kids from school. So if you need a phone or a device repaired, stop by AJ's. It's probably an easy fix for Rob. Reporting for Mustang Magazine, I'm Nick Parkinson. I know who'll be fixing my phone in the future. Next up, former NHS student Karen Broderick is giving back to the Nord community. Mark Murphy and Brandon Walsh bring us the story. Karen Broderick could be considered a gymnastics icon in the town of Norwood. After a prolific career in Norwood High School, she's been coaching here for more than a decade from the comfort of her own gym. So I've been coaching for a long time. I started coaching before I had kids and um, I remember being pregnant the first season that we had, um, that we were kind of um, starting as a club team. So my daughter is 12 years old now, and so I want to say it's about 13 years that I've been coaching. NHS class of 89, Project was actually credited with revitalizing a dead program. I was the only, basically the only person on the team. I did that when I was in my high school years. So my junior and senior year, I won the all-around title for um, the all-around champion for my junior and senior year in high school. Her mom, Mary Ellen Olson, remembers those days of training and the challenges they faced. And we didn't have a lot of money. So um, what we did was um, Karen's dad took a job in the gym, cleaning the gym, and I used to help him on, I used to work nights. Thanks to all her family's support and dedication, Broderick was able to take her skills to the next level. Went into college and I hold a couple of records there. My best record for UNH um, is on bars with a 9.95. And I still hold that record. And that was done in 1993. And all of her accolades eventually led to some special recognition. I think it was right around that year, right after I graduated, um, that I got inducted into the Norwood High Hall of Fame. But when her competitive career was over, she knew it was time to pursue her dream of opening her own gym. So we started off really small so that we could afford it. Um, I did work as many jobs as I possibly could from the time I was 14, um, always knowing that I wanted to open up a gym. Of course, she still had support from her parents. All we did was we would go over and, I mean, it was a big empty building and everybody, and the whole family was over there cleaning the building up and working on it and uh, getting it ready for her to open. Keeping the gym doors open has been a challenge, but Broderick says money shouldn't be a reason to give up. But uh, I wouldn't let that stop somebody from following their dream following their dream because there's always people that are out there willing to help so. So if you'd like to pursue your own gymnastic dreams and receive training from a Hall of Famer, be sure to check out Broderick's Gym in Norwood. According from Mustang Magazine, I'm Mark Murphy. Thanks guys. We have another story about an NHS alumni, but instead of gymnastics, he serves and protects. Morgan Torchetta and John Williams report.
when you cut when you come in here, the evidence officer has the ability to open the door from the other side. So they're, Officer they're Chris Bad was an NHS yeah, alumni yeah. giving back so to like, his community. Look, the thing about working in the police department is having the opportunity to help people. Uh, it's nice to be able to you know to get a chance when somebody needs something to give them a hand. I enjoyed growing up in Norwood. Norwood's a great town. Um, I went to the same high school that you guys are at. We had a lot of friends and I knew a lot of people, so I enjoyed it. Back in high school, the class of 85 graduate was recruited to join the Marine Corps, which he credits with preparing him for a career in public service. You learn a lot about um, how to handle different situations in the Marine Corps and in the military. It's one of those things that when I got out of the Marine Corps, I just ended up kind of getting involved in. And as a part of his daily duties, he's helping the Nord community in different ways. I am a patrolman, so I work uh, in a radio car during the day sometimes. Um, I get the opportunity to work on special projects every so often. Um, the run, hide, shoot, uh, run, hide, fight video that we did for the high school that you guys saw, things like that. Most of all, Patton says he loves his hometown and he feels he'll always be connected to the community. My favorite thing about knowing, uh, knowing everybody, family, community, um, I know a lot of people in town and, and I like that feeling. So if you see Officer Patton out and about, be sure to say hello and give him a shout. Reporting from Mustang Magazine, this is John Williams. Great story! These freshmen are really coming out with good content. I remember being so nervous when I started high school myself, were you? Of course I was, but at least I had a whole class of people that I knew from the middle school. Exactly. It's completely different when you see a new student because when you arrive as a freshman, you don't have that support system. Maddie McDonough and Katie Schmidt show us what it's like to be a new student. Freshman Kaylee Hoover is on the move again. A new student this past semester, her family recently relocated to Norwood. Since I was born, I, this would be my ninth move. I moved from Haverhill, I was there for a month, and then before that I lived in Ohio. Dealing with change, or just moving in general, can create many challenges according to Hoover. Having to start a brand new school is one of them. The size was intimidating. But um, once I realized like how many kid, how many students go here, it wasn't as bad. Ohio, everyone was very stereotypical. Like um, they could tell just by looking at you what clique you belonged in, and that clique knew that you belonged in their group. So it's kind of like they had all their own little groups that stayed in that stayed isolated. But Hoover is finding Norwood High School to be very welcoming, and she's quick to point out that her teachers have inspired her too. Teachers here are, they actually like try to challenge you, unlike Haverhill where they just went by the curriculum and it, that was that. And as Hoover continues to make new friends in Norwood, she's learning about the accepting nature of the town and community. I'm one of those people who feels like I should only act the way I am and not change who I am just to make someone like me. So I'd rather be an outcast and be myself than fit in but not be myself. So while moving around a lot has created some difficulties, Hoover says she's happy to be in Norwood and she's grateful for her past experiences. I get to see, I get to see the world pretty much. So I feel like that's giving me more experience and making me a better person. So if you see Kaylee in the hallway, stop and say hello. Reporting for Mustang Magazine, I'm Maddie McDonough. Thanks girls. Speaking of the student life, the four A's, academics, arts, athletics, and activities are a big part of NHS. Angie Veron and Jordan Matovu give us an insight on what the arts do. The Norwood Evening Garden Club expressed themselves through a special event at the George H. Morse House last month. Floral arranger and volunteer Kathleen Pellegrini explains. The Art in Bloom is mimicked after the Museum of Fine Arts. The idea behind Art in Bloom is to use flowers to interpret a work of art, and some of the art being used was created by Norwood High School students. So we've been doing this for a number of years, and um, this year we have 27 students that have given us paintings and sculptures. To start, each piece of high school artwork is randomly matched with a floral artist from the club. There's a lottery. You pick a number. So you can't choose what you want. You just get what they give you. Creating a floral arrangement can be a challenge, especially for newcomers. 
The first year I was scared to death, my friend did it with me because I didn't know what I was doing. This year, Pellegrini is really putting the time into her arrangement. Um, I looked at the painting and I wanted to have white um, snapdragons for the clouds. And this white in the bottom, I knew I was going to do white mini carnation and white baby's breath. And this is called trachylium. And for the, to mimic the bush and the bushes here, I put it here. Art in Bloom is done for this year, but the Norwood Evening Garden Club is always looking for new members. It's the best thing I did for my retirement. So if you missed Art in Bloom this year, be sure to catch it next spring when it returns to the Morse House in April. Reporting for Mustang Magazine, I'm Angie Veron. Nice story. So, Ron, what do you think about snakes? Snakes? Um, I enjoy snakes, preferably. Do you? I think they're kind of gross, but not everybody does. Emily Trahan and Myra Hines went into the woods to explore nature with someone who really has a sixth sense for snakes. Sam Donnellan is an outdoor enthusiast and he has a passion for discovery. The woods is where the unknown is. The unknown needs to be known. I think I should be one of the people who figures that stuff out. Donnellan first became interested in nature at a young age when his dad brought him to the Savage Center for an after-school program. I would always ask my dad if he could stop here so I can play at the park and oftentimes I'll go into that small woods over there. And after a while, people gave him a nickname. Ever since kindergarten, um, I've been catching snakes really and someone just yelled snake boy and it kind of just stuck. The perfect conditions for exploring in the woods is when it's dry and warm. What's not to like? Fresh air, things to see, like really, what's not to like? I don't think there are anyone else in Norwood who, well, other than a couple people I know, who go out into the woods practically every day to catch wild animals. Sometimes the woods turns up some really interesting finds. Recently, Donnellan came across a decomposing animal. I mean, right now, I am on edge coming here because it's a baby coyote. Coyotes hunt in packs. They are pack hunters. Whatever killed this baby coyote went through the mother, the father, and who knows how many more coyotes to get to that baby, to kill it, eat the rest, and leave that stupid head on display. Exploring and learning about wildlife is his passion, but the learning part hasn't necessarily been easy for Snake Boy. I go to the Carroll School for dyslexic children. It's the best school ever. Like anything that has to do with reading, writing, and language comprehension in general, that stuff's pretty hard for me. There's a class called Bounders. You can shoot a bow and arrow, canoe and kayak, go rock climbing, and you get to literally light a fire for a grade. It's so fun, but it's very exclusive. With the support of the Carroll School and years of experience exploring the woods, the snake boy has developed quite a philosophy of life. Don't take any day for granted. Don't think any day is worthless. Every day you're on this earth, it's a gift. Normal people suck. Normal is a setting on a washing machine. Learn to tolerate the different, the weird, and the awesome. And it's that type of drive that keeps the snake boy heading into the woods for another adventure. Like I said, the unknown. I don't know what's uh, gonna happen today. Yesterday is known, today is a gift, and tomorrow is a mystery. Reporting for Mustang Magazine, Hello? I'm Myra Hines. Hello. Thanks, ladies. Well, that concludes another episode of Mustang Magazine and the first episode all year that featured freshman students from TV One. Tune into the next show or check out some of our past shows on Mustang.media. I'm Ron Marshallsey. And I'm Juliana Shalmo. See you next time. Mustang Magazine is a show produced by broadcast journalism students from the advanced teleprint. Telebraha. Telebraha. Like Finn Kelly and Nick Parkinson discover a phone fixer in Norwood. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. No. Oh, okay. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Please do.